Come on, we're going in to God's word. Get, get, get ready. I love this idea about talking about the motivation behind why. You know, why is, part of my job is not just to tell us what to do or remind us what to do. How I many know, but also to remind us why we're called to do it. Uh, and we always have, have always said this is we're, we love the why and focusing on the why because I mean you know, when you lose your why you lose your way Not only that, but if you lose your why you also lose your willingness And then it becomes no longer willing it becomes obligation It becomes duty and you move from the tree of life back to that tree of knowledge and good and evil and works and performing and obligation and over and over again But come on. He, I just love this motivation as to why all things why the Bible Motivates us to be known for Generosity and there's really two things but I'm going to talk about the first one because it is the single-handed most motivation that you see over and over again as to why be generous. It's one word. It's the coming age. Here's how I wrote it down. I want you to take pictures. I want you to lean in. Let God speak to you. Here's the motivation. One word. Ready? Eternity. The whole reason why this whole thing matters, are you ready, is because there's more to this life than this life. And I know this is, we, we've heard this and we kind of know this, you know, that one day we're, one, you woke, you, you grew up singing, one glad morning when this life is over. But y'all don't we, don't, we don't sing these songs anymore, but we used to sing these songs about going to heaven. We used to sing songs about meeting Jesus. We used to, it's better there than it is here. Not for us today. We, we love, we got an earth a love. And it's, this whole idea about, no, 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 there's a motivation but that, that should motivate all of our generosity and giving and compel it here on earth is this idea of eternity. But listen, not just eternity. Because eternity is all that matters, there's a second thing that I'm going to draw your attention to today, and that's because eternity is the motivation. It also means that it's eternity and opportunity. It's eternity and it's opportunity and here's the struggle that we live with uh, our culture really really understands one. Oh, we we love a good how many love a good opportunity anybody okay some of you are gonna stay broke the rest of your life let me find some people how many love a good opportunity you're like oh hold on, oh I can do what I can take this promotion I, I can climb the corporate ladder here I can make more money if I take this class or if I get this education or if I get this uh, whatever. We would love it and we, 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 we have phrases and we have hashtags. I was, actually, I was thinking about this old school a little bit. But uh, a, a guy named, and I'm going to lose about half of you that are over 45, but uh, there was a, a hip-hop artist named Drake. Okay, if you don't know who Drake is, find someone younger than you and ask them. They'll fill you in on who Drake is. But um, Drake... <laughs> wrote this song and it kind of went major major viral for a while back in the time when like hash do you remember when hashtags were big uh it was like hashtag you know whatever it is and um he wrote this song called the motto and it was featuring little wayne and if you don't know who little wayne is same thing with drake find someone younger they'll help you out but drake and little wayne did this song called the motto and i was like i wasn't gonna read some of the course until i read the lyrics and i was like we're not going to be able to read that in church, but, <laughs> but it, jumped, it jumped out at me, and here's why. Because in the chorus, he made this famous, famous hashtag go viral, and the, the hashtag was, and it said it over and over in the chorus, hashtag YOLO. And the hashtag YOLO meant you only live once. Hash, I, 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 can't, I, was gonna, I can't sing the song because you, you know it could lead places. Ha, hashtag YOLO. You only live once. And basically the song is since you only live once. Live in la vida loca. We're in, uh, uh. It's give it all, baby, because you only live one time. You better live it up now. You better get it now. You better do it now. Achieve it now. Climb it now. Have it now. Why? Because you only live once. Once the problem is and I, I, I even if you like that song or I hate to burst your bubble and Drake if you're watching the problem is it's not true <laughs> Little Wayne if you're white it ain't true 
I mean, it's a cool song, and it makes for an amazing hashtag that's tweetable and Instagrammable and commentable. It's, it's a hashtag YOLO, but it's really not true. We need to come up with a Christian hashtag that's not hashtag YOLO. The hashtag we need is hashtag YOLT. You only live twice. And here's what I was thinking. I was like, it's, it, it's funny and hashtag YOLO. But I, when I was thinking about this, I said, no, no, it's really hashtag YOLT because you only live twice. But pay attention. And how you live the first life determines how and where you live your second life. Oh, I know, I know cultures like do it now, have it now, because you only live once, do it, feels good, do it, feels right, get the money now, spend it on you, focus on you, upgrade it now, have it now. And when we are unaware that culture is shoving this near, we lose focus that how we live and how we prioritize in this life directly determines how we spend the next life. Don't believe me? Let me show it to you in God's word. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must, how many of us? I know you don't want to read it. How many of us? Come on, say it. Oh. So what does that mean? If you believe or don't, it doesn't matter. If you're an atheist, it doesn't matter. If you're agnot, it doesn't matter. If you're a seeker, search. It's, it, oh, this is an all play. Regardless of, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is oh Lord receive what is due us for the things done while in the body whether uh oh good or bad now make no mistake this is not talking about salvation this is talking about there's a two question test you get into heaven the first question is what did you do with my son that's Jesus there's nothing you can do there's nothing you can give there's nothing you can earn it's the free unmerited favor and gift and grace of almighty God but listen once that's your answer that you knew Jesus not head knows in your heart he was the lord of your life then you're in heaven but then there's another que- there's another See, there's another thing you have, another question you have to answer. And this is what Paul is talking about, right? It's the reward for what we did where? Here. While we were on the earth. Look, look at how Jesus said it, because it wasn't just Paul, Matthew 16, verse 27. This is Jesus. He said, for the Son of Man, talking about himself, is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then what will he do? He will he'll reward each person according to what they have Done. So listen, because eternity matters, guess what else matters? Opportunity matters. Remember, it's, etern- it's eternity what? And opportunity. And here's what's keeping me up is we will be rewarded, ready for this, only based on the opportunities that we took advantage of. Only on the opportunities that we took advantage of. And I was thinking about opportunities. You know, opportunities can be tricky because once you miss them, sometimes they don't ever, you don't ever get them back. Um, one of my, the, the, the most heavy but inspiring to me documentaries that I've ever watched, maybe because it had such a, a pivotal role in my life, the event did of 9-11, because that, that's why I joined the, the Marine Corps right after that is, you know, after, I don't know if you've seen it, but they made several documentaries about the 9-11, and one of the documentaries that was released uh, from 9-11 is the, the documentary that has all of the tapes and all of the text messages and all of the phone calls and all of the emails and all of the voicemails that were sent to loved ones knowing that they were getting ready to uh, getting ready to die i mean it just kills the, all the family and the kids and all these here's what i noticed it was striking to me when i was watching that it was striking to me how many people ready for this were saying things that they wished they had already They, they, they wished, they, they, they wanted to say, they, they wanted to say all of the things that they already w- wished that they had said. And now, listen, they're, they're facing eternity. They're going to die at any moment. And now they're, they're wishing. You, maybe they left that morning. And, th- and they were arguing about the kids, or the, the homework, or because they were late. Or, and now, all of a sudden, when you're facing eternity, how many know the trash b- not being taken out doesn't matter anymore? What matters is... I didn't tell you that I love you and how much you, I care about you and how much you've meant to me. And it's been the greatest honor and joy of my life to do this thing 
with you. And there's this regret and there's this opportunity that was, that was missed. And it was, it was crazy. And when I was thinking about this idea of eternity and opportunity, the scripture jumped to my mind. I want to show it to you. It's in Ephesians chapter 5. Because eternity matters, be careful how you live. This is what, again, we're talking about the motivation. Why does it matter how you live your life here? Because one day you're going to see him. You're going you're to spend eternity somewhere. So he says, hey, be careful then how you live your life. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are what? Wise. I love this. What does that mean? Make the most, what? Of every opportunity in these evil days. So here's my job as a pastor. If you belong to Ike Church, here's, here's what keeps me. I don't want you getting there wishing you did here. I don't want you, you, I don't want, you don't want to be in heaven, in line, just got into heaven because you knew Jesus, and then he says, oh, well, before you go, what did you do with I gave you on that? And then us be like, regret that we never shared the gospel with that coworker. We never invited that friend to church. I never was a part of what God was really doing on the earth through his church. And we've missed opportunities here because we were not focused on on eternity, and this has me all worked up, obviously. Uh, I mean, I, this, the whole the season of our church and this whole idea that, man, one day, Josh, you're going to give an account one day because eternity is all that matters. This is keeping me up, up, up at night. I love this. Here's how Paul says, I'm going to keep pushing here, showing you what this is going to look like about eternity and opportunity. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 says this, but on judgment day, some of you are like, Josh, there's a lot of judgment so far. Are we going to read a happy verse? Can we be positive? I'm positive there's going to be a judgment day. <laughs> and you're going to be involved in it. Me too. But on judgment day, watch what happens. Fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. So let me level the playing field. Josh, I'm not a builder. Oh, yes, you're building your life on something right now. You're a builder. You're building that business. You're building those kids. You're building that marriage. You're building your influence. You're building a life. You're a builder. So he says one day you're going to stand before God and he's going to test. Fire is going to test to see what your building was really all about. The fire will show if a person's work, what? Has any value. Let me stop and ask you a question. Do you want your life's work to have any value? Anybody? What, that, who wants to waste their life doing unvaluable things? Fire will show if a person's work has any value. I want mine to have value, Josh. How do I know? Next verse tells us. Watch. If the work... Oh, my goodness. If the work survives, that builder, what, will receive a reward. Here's why I'm worked up. I think there's a lot of Christians who should be known for our generosity. We're doing a lot of work here on earth. Ready for this? That is not going to survive when you get to eternity. Busy doing a lot of things, a lot of things we think are valuable until God's word says, hey, when you see me, fire is going to really prove what you really gave your life to. And the only thing that will survive are things that we put towards eternity and not, and not here. I, I, the work has to survive. By the way, this is why at Heights Church, all of our giving, everything that we do, you ready for this? This won't be new if you've been here for a while. It's done in Jesus' name. We don't do it in other names. We, we do it in Jesus' name. So we don't just meet needs. We meet needs in Jesus' name. We don't just give people cups of cold water. We give people cups of cold water in Jesus' name. RVA week, we don't just build decks and build homes and help people and, and go to the hospital and serve and blow up balloons and do Build-A-Bear because we need something to do. We do all those things in Jesus' name because if it's not done in Jesus' name, all of our building, all of our serving, if it's not done in his name ready, we lose. We lose. That's why it heights. Everything that we do, if, it, if it's not going to show up there, if it's not going to have any value, if it's not going to survive earth, we're not doing it. We're just, we just made the decision. We're, we're, we're not doing it. And because there's a coming age, and listen, there is. This is the motivation 
that God uses to get us motivated to get involved generos- with our generosity is this idea of e- eternity, and because eternity is all that matters. Three truths. Just very, how many? One, two, three, easy. Come on, three truths that you're going to have to, you're not just going to have to understand, you're going to have to know them, but you can't just know them, you're going to have to live these truths out in your life if you're going to be known for what Jesus was known for. Because eternity is all that matters, number one, you're going to have to understand, write it down, take a picture, that the line is longer than the dot. The line is longer than the dot. Some of you are like, that doesn't make any sense, Josh. Let me explain it. It's, it's from a book called The Treasure Principle, written by uh, Randy Alcorn. And in, this, in his book, I love this, he has this picture, and they're, they're going to put it up on this picture. And here's what it is. It's this idea that there's this dot, and the dot represents what? Life. It represents our life on earth. Let me tell you something about this dot. That's life, and you don't need me to tell you this. Your life is telling you this. This dot is full of hurt. It's full of problems. It's full of some happiness. It's full of some joys. But here's the deal with this dot. It is very, very small and very, very finite. It has a beginning. You don't always say it. And it has a... Okay, let me say that in a way that maybe you can understand a little bit. You're going to die one day. Josh, that's morbid. Talk about Jesus' life. Why are you talking about, you're going to die. I'm going to die one day. By the way, this is the, this is the most leveling thing. It, there's not a rich, rich people die, poor people die, white people die, black people die. It's just a part of the dot. I can prove, how many, how many have lost loved ones tragically or suddenly? Anybody? Look at the hands. It's, it's almost touched everybody. Guess what that's called? That's the dot. It's, it's fragile. The Bible, and I'm going to show it to you in a second, it, it says it's a mist, it's a, it's a vapor. And here's, what, here's, here's the principle. If the dot represents earth, and it's both small and finite, yet so many believers especially have all of their attention, all of their treasure, all of their effort wrapped up in something, ready for this? That's going to end in just a few years. Rather, he says, you live on, you're living on the dot, but pay attention, there's also a line. And the line, ready for this, is long and infinite. It is unending. It lasts forever. Let me say it to you like this. Ready for it? You're going to spend eternity somewhere. Again, you're, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. So here's the main principle of the whole entire book that's really eating me up is that you may live on the dot, but you don't live for the dot. You live in the dot, but you live for the line. In everything that you do, you, you, you live for the line. And it's, it, I'm telling you, when I got this principle, it shifted something in me because why would we be investing and spending all of our time and energy on something that's fading versus something that's going to last for forever? Now it makes sense when you see this why Jesus could over and over again say things like, why are you storing up treasures for yourself on the dot? Accounts on accounts on accounts for all this treasure all on the dot. Why are you so focused on the dot? Do you realize that the dot for you or for me could end today on the way home from church? And then the only thing left is eternity forever. So listen, why am I saying that? Understand that the line is longer than the dot. And though you live in the dot, make sure that you're putting all of your treasure, energy, effort, time, focus towards the line. Why? Because eternity, because eternity matters. How do you know? Here's how Paul said it in Philippians chapter 3. The dot. Many lives as, live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Here's how he really defines living on the dot. Come on. Their mind is only on let me ask you a question, and this is a question I didn't want to ask myself, but you need to, I did, I want you to ask it. How much of your time are you thinking about earth versus heaven? I, I, I just not mean to be guilty, I'm just saying, if I, even if I talked to my staff, I was like, hey, today, it's the Lord's day, we're in God's house. How much time have we focused, yes, your work week, this week, thinking about 
Let me say it in a different way, because I haven't even, where you're just burdened for the lost. When I mean burdened, I mean, I, I remember back in the day at church, you used to run up, even Wednesday night prayer, it was, you used to lay down at the altars heavy with the burden, crying out for family members that didn't know God. Weeping for the lost. Praying, there used to be, there used to be single moms, dad, they would come up and they would pray for their whole entire house to be saved. Oh, I know it's popular now. We want to pray for a house. Not the household. But God, give me a house. Can I ask you a question? What good is a house if it's full of hell? We used to be burdened about people. We used to, eternity used to matter and there would be this weight. Oh, God, save, save my, save my family. Mind only on earthly things. Oh, I love this. Come on. But here's, here's people that are living for the line. What are we? But, but our citizenship is in, come on, what? Heaven. Heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to live for eternity, because eternity is all that matters, you got to remember, live for the line, not for, live for the line, not for the die. Because eternity matters. Number two, because living for eternity matters, you have to understand that there's also limited time and incredible opportunity. Oh, I love this. Limited time and incredible opportunity. What does that mean? We all have limited time. Ready for this? But not everybody has incredible opportunity. Not everybody. Can you imagine? Let me sit, I'm going to level. Look at the opportunity cap. There's churches all across America that would die for the opportunity that our church has right now. Yeah. Look, look, at, look at the opportunity. And I, I'm, this is a little spoiler alert for Vision Sunday, but I, I'm sorry. I just woke up with a case of I can't help myself. <laughs> the opportunity that our church family has, we, we are five months away from moving into a brand new building. Ready for this? That is three times the size of us. We probably had no business building it. Eric, I was thinking about, why are we building a building that seats four times of the amount of adults that are in here right now? Because there's an incredible opportunity. Because this thing didn't start in this room. There's a group of people that were in this room before you were in this room. That saw the opportunity of this room and gave to this room and believed. And now you're sitting in the seat of somebody else's sacrifice. Why? Because there was limited time, an incredible opportunity. We have an opportunity to finish this project and literally reach thousands and thousands and thousands of people for Jesus. Marriages restored, addictions broken off people, purpose and destinies given. We have an opportunity. I just woke up fired up. We also have an opportunity. I was thinking about this, Brittany, to expand Heights Grocery. We just started it a few months ago, already out of space, already a line out the door, don't have enough people helping, can't get enough food. Dan, we don't need one truck, we need five trucks. It's not one. The team said, we, we think, Pastor, we can get a refrigerated truck. We can't keep the meat, the, the meat cold. We don't need five, we need a fleet. Why? Because there's limited time. Oh, but there's incredible opportunity. But here's the thing about opportunity. It's only good if you take advantage of it. Because sometimes opportunity, listen, for many of us, and you've experienced this personally in your life, opportunity is like time. If you don't take advantage of it, oftentimes you miss it. You, you don't get another you don't get another opportunity, opportunities to expand high school, opportunities to start a Heights Academy of young, listen, training and developing, recruiting, empowering, running, and releasing and sending the next generation that's going to come change, shape, and bring America back to the word of God. This is a burden of ours. It's an opportunity. Why? Because the public school system is going crazy. Insanity. And we don't. By the way, we don't shrink back and take all of the salt out of culture. We train up the salt to have more flavor and then inject it back into the culture. We're not trying to create, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We're not trying to create safe Christian spaces. 
No, I mean to build a fire inside of a young person and say, go charge the gates of hell. And we're right there with you. Let's go. Uh, but all it is is an opportunity. And opportunities, listen, only matter if you take advantage of them. We have limited time. Oh my goodness, what an incredible opportunity. Let me just say this too, because I was thinking, it's not just the opportunity that the church has corporately. Let me tell you something. You have an opportunity. You have an opportunity. It's not just celebrating all the, op- oh, go Heights, what an opportunity. You have an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you something that today is an opportunity for you to surrender your life to Jesus? Today's an opportunity for you to stop running. Today's an opportunity for you to finally get the help that you need to overcome that addiction. Today's an opportunity to actually start loving your spouse like Christ loved the church. Today's an opportunity to be free from the pain in your past so he can put you on a course towards your future. Today's an opportunity for you to forgive the person, the family member that you haven't spoken to in decades. All of us live in the tension of managing opportunities, my plea. And I'm almost begging you, don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your moment. And this is why the Bible over and over again. I love this. This is how it says it. Psalms 39 verse. Because there's limited time and incredible opportunity. So Lord, remind me. How brief my time on earth will be. And remind me that my days are numbered. And that my life is fleeing away. My life is no longer than the width of my hand. An entire lifetime is just a moment to you. Ready for this? Human existence is but a what? James says it's it's a mist. It's It's a vapor. It's here today and it's gone. So because of that, look at Psalms chapter 90, verse 12. So Lord, and here's my prayer for my life and for your life. So then God, teach your people, teach us to number our days and to recognize how few they are. And because there's an incredible opportunity, come on, what? Help us say it with me too. Spend them as we should. Because there's limited time. And there's incredible opportunity. So because eternity is all that matters, I'm telling you something, followers, you're going to have to focus, you're going to have to live more for the line than you are the dot. You're going to have to realize that there's limited time and God's uniquely gifted you. Corporately gifted us with an unbelievable opportunity. And because of that, listen, the third thing you're going to have to know, write it down, is that the time to decide is now. Oh my goodness. Something about now that I love. Something, there's a sense of urgency to now. I don't know, but I'm not, a, I'm not a very good later person. Oh, we'll do it later. Oh, let's get to it later. Later drives me insane. Just saying it's raising my blood pressure right now. I can feel it in my body. Oh, later. I'll do it later. I'll get to it later. I'll love later. I'll start serving later. I'll give later. I'll surrender later. I'll apply later. I'll get free tomorrow. I'll start reading my Bible tomorrow. I'll join the church tomorrow. I'll get involved tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Can I ask you a question? If none of us are guaranteed for tomorrow, why are so many of us waiting on tomorrow? There, I feel like, I don't know, one of my like, I don't know if it's a spiritual gift, I don't know how the Lord's gonna use this, but I mean to shake the Christian church back awake from its slumber. All oh, just say, oh, tomorrow. No, 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 no. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. You don't even know if you have tomorrow. We could leave this room and our life could be over and get to heaven and be like, I wish I would have. 
Why are we waiting on tomorrow, 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 tomorrow? Can I tell you something? What if today was your opportunity and you keep missing it because you keep saying tomorrow? I'll start it tomorrow. I love what Pastor Justin said last week. We've been saying it all week. It's getting late. Katie, it's getting late to start the school. It's getting late. The time to decide is why? Because it's getting late. And you're not promised tomorrow. The time to get your family organized is now. The time to start loving your spouse, now. The time for live for the Lord unashamedly, now. The time to be bold in your workplace, now. It's not later, it's not tomorrow. No, the time is, 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 is now. How many of us are missing the opportunity that God has because we're saying tomorrow? The reality is eternity is real and people and families and marriages are going to heaven or hell every single day and we have to decide if we're gonna do anything about it or not. But listen to me, the time to decide that is, oh my goodness, the time to decide that is, is now. We've got to make a decision in our generosity. We have to make a decision if we're going to be known for that. This is how Paul says it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. I love this because it applies to every single area of your life, but this is key. So whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also what? Reap generously. So here it is. Each of you should give what you have. You get to decide. You decide. Each one of you should decide it in your hearts what to give, not reluctantly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Everyone knows that. So here's my ask to you. You've got to decide. But listen, before you decide, first answer this question. What do you want to be known for? This will help you what to decide. Let me say, before you decide what to give, you first have to decide how you want to live your life. Because there's a qualifier here. He, you said, he says, if you sow sparingly, you. Notice how that law of the harvest, which is also a spiritual law, was the sentence that came before. Hey, decide what you should give. In other words, he didn't just say, hey, decide what you should give. He said, hey, there's a law at work that if you reap generously, if you sow generously, you'll reap generously. So now that you know how the law works, make a decision what you want to do. Make it, let me, so let me help you out as a pastor. There's several that I could do. I don't have time to do a bunch. But I want to, because e eternity is all that matters, let me give you very, very quickly some things that you might decide on. But ready for it? Hurry up. I would just... Pray about it over the next month. What month? Oh, I'll just see how I feel. No! Now! The time is now. Some areas that you might decide on. Let me give it to you. Here's something to decide on is maybe decide to, especially in the area of your generosity, maybe decide to become a percentage giver. Percentage giver. I'm not here to preach on tithing again. We understand that that's a principle, not a law. It's not a law. It's love, by the way. It's not a law. It's the first 10% we believe from, from God's word. Just make a decision. Why? Because so many of you, you have a plan for everything else in your life. And I love asking people, especially in the area of finances, is asking them, do you have a giving plan? A giving plan? Who ever thought of that? And I was like, do you have a plan for your retirement? Do you have a plan for your health insurance? Uh, do you have a plan if they have, we got plans for everything else. And then you say, what is your giving plan? My giving plan is to really reach in here and see if there's anything left at the end of the month and then just give what I, listen, stop living by default and start living by design. If everything else gets a plan in your life, don't you think the thing that could impact eternity, plunder hell, and populate heaven, don't you think that deserves some attention, some focus, a plan that I make X and I'm going to give X amount of my income to what? Impacting eternity. Why? Because eternity is all that matters. 
There's no pressure. It's not a pressure thing. It's an obedience thing. Do you trust God? I don't know. Do you? Become a percentage giver. Here's what I'll say about this. Because it's not law. Wherever you are, wherever you are, take a step. Oh my goodness. This is what God's looking for. He's not. Take a step. If you're given 1%, go to 3%. If you're given 5 go to 8 Or just stretch your faith and start. But the time to decide is, here's something else I want you to decide on. Everybody, please do me a favor. This, this card is in the seat back in front of you. This is not the Connect card. Would you please take this card out? Every single person, please. It's in the seat back right in front of you. It's called Known For. Known For. If you're in the front row, they're right underneath you. Everybody take out this. This is an all play. There's nothing happening today, by the way. Some of you started sweating. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Nothing's happening. I just want you to have it. I want you to take it home. Look, you're reading the card, but give me your eyes, please. I want you to look at me. Don't fill this out now. This is, our how for, this is our heart for the house card. It explains the need. We have a $2.1 million need to finish this building so that we can move in for Easter, March 31st. 2.1 is, is a lot of money. You know what it is? It's an opportunity. Some of you are like, now I'm getting a little bit more gray because there's a lot to manage. But everyone always asks, like, are you scared? What? No. Why? Because it's an opportunity. That's all that it is. So we're asking you, listen, I love the fact that in nine years, our church, we've never had an ask or an obligation. I've unapologetically, though, asked you, ask God. And then ready for this? Be obedient to whatever God speaks to you to give. So that, that you can see here, you can read it. It's above, it's one time a year. And we are basically going to have whatever on November the 12th when we all come together. I'm believing that the entire gap is going to be claimed for. What we're going to do is we're going to fill out our name. Some of you have made a pledge from last year. If you're able to finish it, you can check that box. If you're not, it's completely understandable. And then this second box is what you are going to give, what you think you're going to be able to give in total from Heart for the House Sunday, November the 12th through March 31st. This is all the card. What is it, Josh? An opportunity. That's it. And everybody, this is an all play for our church because even if you don't plan on giving or being a part on the back of this card, we've done this every year. There's a I'm praying for and I'm thanking God for and everybody has something to thank God for and everybody has something that you're praying for. Amen? I want you to take this card. We're going to watch what God does in the life of our church. So what's, what do we want to do with this card? Take it with you. We have more. Take it. Ask God. Ready? And then listen. How we said it a couple weeks ago, you know it. Speak, Lord. I'm listening. And then just listen to what God... Here's, here's another thing that I'm going to ask you to do. To decide on. I love these. The random act of kindness cards. Actually, I was, decide says, you don't need to decide on this. Just do it. Go take these cards. I love these cards. Why? Because they say a little something extra to show you God loves you. And then they flip it over and it says, and so do we. Go to Starbucks. Go to lunch today. Some of you are going to Crackle Barrel. Oh, my Lord, it's got right after this. Go there, get in that Chick-fil-A. Not Chick-fil-A, that's God's chicken. It's closed on Sunday. You get, that means you got to go to Arby's. You're going to Popeye's. You, wherever you're going. Listen, don't just take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. But listen, do it in Jesus' name. Do it in Jesus' name. Watch what happens. Do it today. Bless the fire out of somebody. We ordered these. You guys took so many the first weeks. They were out of stock. We just got a brand new shipment. They're out in the lobby. Go get them. And guess what this is too? It, it's just an opportunity. What? To change eternity. To make an impact. Time to decide is now. So as I close, I'm going to pray for you. Here's what I want you to look at. Look at me, look at me. I'm going to pray. As you give, as you're generous, not just with your money, as you're generous with your time, your resources, your ideas, your influence, as you're generous, there's two questions. 
Then I'm going to ask you, I hope they haunt you every time you try to give, every time you try to do something. I'm praying the Spirit of God sets these on the door and the frame of your heart that you would never be able to escape them. Here's the questions, the filter that you need to look through. No matter what you give, here they are. I'm going to give them to you. These things changed my life when I started doing it. Here's the first question. It's the difference question. And here's what the difference question is. Is will this make an eternal difference? Is what I'm about to do, ready for it? Is it going to impact eternity or just impact now? Oh. Let me say it to a different way. Look, not all giving and philanthropic giving and charities are the same. The largest, the largest single philanthropic gift given in our generation was Warren Buffett to the Gates Foundation. $3.5 billion gift. The largest single donation from any one person to another charitable organization. And you ready? The Gates Foundation does some amazing things. They're meeting so many needs. Do you know what kills me? Not one of those needs being met is being met in Jesus' name. It's being met in the Gates Foundation name. It's being met in the dot. And people, though, are headed for the line. So as you give, Make sure that your work, make sure that your giving, make sure that your serving survives in eternity. Does that make sense? It's the difference question. Put it as the filter on all your giving. I'm not giving to things that don't show up there. Second question I'm going to pray is the God question. And the God question is, what is God speaking to me? You're not going to be responsible for something that God didn't tell you to do. But you are going to be responsible for when he speaks. What's our response? Yes. One of the most amazing things that I could ever lead you to do in this church. Oh my, I want it so bad for you. I look at my life and I can see these moments when it's happening. It's just so rewarding. One of the most rewarding things that you could ever experience is to know that you know that you know that God has spoken to you. Oh, it fills you with so much faith and confidence. I want you to experience it. So get God, what are you speaking to me? Go to work tomorrow. I dare you on the way to work. God, what opportunities do you have for me today? What people are you going to put in front of my path? Speak, Lord. I'm listening. And after you hear, ready? Obey. Trust him. Obey. As we close this series right now, the known for series, here's what my prayer, my, my hope today is that every single one of you experience, and I'm going to pray. Listen to me. When I make a difference in eternity, God makes a difference in me. I make a difference for eternity. Listen, again, it's the motivation. You think it's, it does help others, but the person that it really, really helps the most is you. God, help us to make a difference for eternity. And you'll make a difference in me.